and i'll appreciate if you put yourself on mute in case if you're not speaking so that way you know there won't be any noise hello oh. yeah i was on mute or what yeah, okay so uh before we start uh, welcome everyone for the agile leadership lean coffee session uh, uh my plan is to have this lean coffee session once a month if not frequently uh wherein you know as a community we can come together explore what's working what's not working what are the challenges faced on the ground uh, i have interacted with few of you uh offline during my previous engagement uh, either you know while working or during training session but this is a free event open to everyone who want to learn more about agile leadership the way uh these lean coffee sessions are run our agenda is not preset so essentially it's driven by the participant anything to do with agile leadership anything to do with how agile needs to be implemented can be popped up so we'll have all those topics listed here i reckon you should have access to this board which i have shared in the uh, zoom chat as well as on linkedin forum uh, too so you just need to click on plus button if i want to talk about let's say discipline agile just just as an example agile toolkit okay you just need to create that card and then click on plus button and it will appear the way this session is going to be run is we'll have five minutes when you can pop up you know at least a couple of cards on this board and after that we'll have quick voting session so i'll come to voting session uh once we are done with you know listing down all topics so it's purely driven by the participants together collectively we'll brainstorm if there is something saying that how to facilitate uh, uh, you know retro session in a distributed team as an example right so that will be topic if that topic has got maximum vote, we'll take pull it into discussing column. We'll spend uh, five minutes to discuss that topic. If everyone is fine with that, we'll just move that card to discuss. So discussing, then discussed. If we think that we need to spend more time, so we'll quickly do uh, voting, which is which is on on the video. So I will appreciate if you turn on your video, uh, because. What we are looking for is either thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up means we are fine to continue discussing this topic for next two minutes. Thumbs down means we are done enough discussion. It's good to go ahead. And uh, that's how you know we'll, we'll go ahead and discuss everything. It might happen that we won't be able to go through each and everything on this particular board. That's fine. What we can do, we can have uh, you know offline conversation. I intend to create uh, uh, multiple channels to which we can interact. Uh, if not, I'll I'll give my best to explain uh, and address that particular topic and you know share that recording with uh, each of you. So that's the format. Uh, sometimes people also call it as an unconference. Uh, you might have heard about it. Uh, unconference is wherein you know people come together set agenda and then there is a feat of two a rule which says that if you are interested you'll keep talking about it exploring about it if you are not interested then you'll move on to the next topic so that's how it works i will i will give a couple of minutes how many minutes do we need to pop up topics i can see someone has put in one card there so i reckon no one is facing any issues to create cards uh samir i know you are walking on on the streets of tokyo oh samir has dropped no he is there so no no I, i'm here i'm here i'm here who I, i'm not sitting in the area i'm sitting in some area awesome so in case if you want any topic to be added here just uh text that topic to me and then i okay. will pop up card for you okay uh yeah uh so where do we type type we just type on this Okay. Yeah, you can either either type it on uh, in the chat window in Zoom, or okay. you can you can WhatsApp me. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll do that. Cool. So uh, we'll have five minutes just to pop up cards, and then post that we'll we'll talk through those topics. Okay. So I'll start timer now. Those who have joined recently, we are updating topics to be discussed uh, in this session on this retro board, which I have shared in the chat window as well as on uh, WhatsApp and LinkedIn group. Let me start timer. And another thing to make it interactive, I will appreciate if you turn on your camera 
video so that you know we'll feel like we are sitting in a real real world rather than just listening to people Sandeep, hi yeah. Mukul here. Yes, Mukul. Sandeep, I have an unscheduled meeting that has come up, so I will drop in another five minutes. That's fine. That's fine. If you have got any topics, pop it, pop it up so that you know we'll 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 talk about it uh, and then share re recording with you. I will. Yeah, I, I'll um, I'll circle back to uh, the recording as well. Perfect. Sounds good. Sandeep, who do we have on the call today? Um, some agile practitioners, um, what, what sort of skill sets do we have? Yeah, so we have got a few agile practitioners uh, as well as uh, non-agile practitioners who are newcomer or someone who has just started journey uh, on agile. So it was open invite with no, no prerequisite. The uh, whole mm -hmm. idea was just to come together, brainstorm and learn from each other. Sure. And I can see by looking at the list, few of attendees have already done scale agile certification or you know on the way to do that, like you. You you have already done it yesterday. <laughs> and a uh, few of you are interested in exploring more about agile world, like discipline agile and other stuff. Consultants or people who are working in industry roles, mixture. Yeah, yeah. So professionals, working professionals who, who are in the industry for at least I reckon five to ten years minimum. All right, one more minute to go. Uh, Sandeep, I have shared in the WhatsApp group. Could you please add that? Sure. So my is open space versus a coffee bin. What is the difference? So lean coffee versus open space. That's, that's what you are curious to know. Yes, yes. Okay.
Sandeep, I do have a thought. When I look at all these uh, frameworks around us, right? There is SAFE, there is Scrum, there is Agile. Uh, it reminds me of uh, uh, the uh, year 2000 when everyone was talking about C versus C++ versus Java, <laughs> uh, Struts versus uh, Spring Framework. Yeah. So um, it, it looks like the market is flooded with uh, different ways of moving, with the aim of moving things fast enough, with the aim of seeing the results fast enough. So all these frameworks are now emerging. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, someone has popped up that card here. So we'll be discussing that as well. Hi, Sam. Good to have you here. Andy, thanks, mate. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be a, you know, a strict timekeeper because we have got limited time and a lot of things to uh, get through. So, so we, these are the topics which we have got so far. Uh, those who have joined recently, feel free to pop up any additional topic which you want to, you know, get discussed. Now, what we are going to do quickly, we are going to have, uh, you know, voting on all, all of those topics. So you will have three votes to cast. I will show you how to cast vote uh, in case if you haven't used this in past. So let's say I want to discuss first one, or like I want to cast vote on this one. So I'll just give thumbs up. I want another topic here and then this one. So I'll cast three votes. If I am by mistake, if I have clicked something, I will. I can just click on cross button, so that vote will be taken away, and then I will. You know, we can give two votes to one card as well. <coughs> so this is how it will work. Uh, we'll have two minutes just to give votes, and post that will uh, we'll have prioritized backlog on which you know we are going to work. I will just discuss that. Uh, all right. So two minutes. Everyone has got two, three votes. Feel free to cast your votes on the board. In case if you are facing difficulty, just let me know. I can do proxy voting for you. Been there, done that, Sandeep? Proxy voting in the <laughs> past? <laughs> you can help me, Sandeep, on the third one. On the third one? Yeah. OK. Right. Anyone who hasn't casted vote yet? No? All good? Cool. All right. As a self-organized team, what we are going to do is we are going to go through the prioritized list of topic and uh, get through it. I will need someone to be a timekeeper. Uh, who want to be timekeeper every topic will be going to discuss for five minutes uh once five minutes are done probably you can just raise your hand like this if you have a video video on and then you know we'll move on we'll we'll we'll, we'll check whether we want to continue by giving thumbs up if not you know we'll move on to the next topic okay i can do timekeeper for the first two but i have to go in 20, in 10 minutes so i'll do the first two <laughs> no worries all right, so this topic has got maximum vote, which is, I'll just move that into discussing column, which is with problem solving from PMI, how different it is from discipline or safe or scrum. Who has put that card? Anyone want to provide some background? I put that card in Sandeep. Yeah. So as a part of my continuous learning process, right, I completed my leading safe with you a few, a few weeks ago. 
and I'm constantly looking at uh, what are the new things that are coming in. And this, this is something which caught my attention. One, it has a jazzy name, but when I started reading it through, um, it again came across as the same thing, you know, the cards going through different, uh, going through a funnel. Yeah. So um, uh, that got me thinking that um, PMI already has disciplined agile. PMI is already doing a lot of work in agile space and in standard or regular project management space. What is a need to introduce um, wicked problem solving? Or how? what is a differentiating factor we have for, for this course? Yeah. So I don't have the answers, but that's why I put this uh, question in the forum. No worries. Anyone want to give it a go before I can jump in? No? I can probably share my two cents. So what PMI has done, Discipline Agile is there in the market since long time. Recently, a couple of years back, PMI has actually realized that they are late to the party in Agile world because they haven't had anything else to offer. And uh, they have acquired Discipline Agile and repositioned themselves uh, as a, someone who can cater to the wider market. When, you know, still there are organizations where there's a project based, based funding or hybrid Agile model, which is getting implemented. So Discipline Agile is not another framework, it's a toolkit. It's a toolkit which says that, you know, based on your organizational constraint, based on the team structure, based on the kind of problem you are trying to solve, uh, or kind of knowledge you have got within a team, you can pick and choose different delivery life cycles, Agile delivery life cycles. And in that, they have got six Agile delivery life cycles, and it's a goal-based approach rather than, you know, one size fits all. Like SAFE says that, you know, if you are working in a large enterprise when people need to come together in a large group, like 50 to 125, then SAFE is way to go. Scrum says that if you want to work on a, you know, uh, increment, which can be delivered within a fortnight or, or a month uh, within a team, you can follow that sprint cadence. What Discipline Agile has said or has come up with is uh, ways of working. Choose your ways of working. That's their motto. When they say that, before you go and implement Agile, understand what's the context, understand what kind of challenges or problem you are trying to solve. And based on that, and they have got different process goals. So as a consultant, as a senior Agile coach or, you know, Scrum Master or even delivery manager, when you go there, you can, you, they have got a tactical scaling metrics using which you can identify whether Scrum is the right model to apply whether it should be Kanban, whether it should be safe, if it's a big program, or it should be something called as, uh, you know, wherein you have got a fixed scope, you have got a fixed timeline, and nothing can be delivered in a small chunks. So still, you will apply certain elements of Scrum or Kanban throughout the life cycle, but value will be delivered only towards end. So it's like a toolkit wherein they have provided different options and whole understanding who is going to do, you know, a more, more, uh, training in discipline agile or understanding more about them is that you have already got some experience you know what scrum is you know what kanban is you know what lean startup is you know what safe is so with that knowledge if you want to come up with few guidelines if you want to come up with few uh, you know process oriented uh, approach then you can you can explore discipline agile when they will tell you that if you want to do reporting for example not everyone will be measuring velocity. Not everyone will be looking into story point estimates, right? Because if you have got certain teams who are traditionally working in different way, where a fixed point estimation is done or in, in number, number of days estimation is done, then how do you marry that? How do you do that reporting at a program level or portfolio level? So they, Discipline Agile has come up with a few approaches saying that you need to rely on a few generic metrics. You need to rely on uh, certain metrics which will be providing guidelines like quality, customer experience, those can be guidelines and let team decide how they want to track it. So that's, that's more about discipline agile as a toolkit rather than a framework. Uh, now it has got huge potential considering fact that, and most of us are seasoned professionals. We have seen that there isn't any organization where all teams are following Scrum or all teams are following Kanban or all teams are following safe. And that's not what happens in the real world, right? You have to, deal with the reality when funding might not be there for a persistent teams or you might have mixed bag of teams for some scrum makes sense for some safe makes sense for some kanban makes sense so in that case you need to you know be aware of multiple things and then uh, pick and choose what makes sense in that context thanks Ben. i think five minutes done do you want yeah, to yeah is that clear Mukul? do we want to move on 
what I will do in addition to this, I will share a few additional details uh, on on LinkedIn. Uh, there is a book called Choose Your Wow, Choose Your Ways of Working. Uh, and there are a few videos. So I'm more than happy to share that to get you know more understanding about what's what's different. Sure. So that will help Sandeep. Sandeep, I have a leading question, if I may. Uh, I'll just take 10, 10 seconds. Okay. The, the question is, uh, when we are talking, having a fixed scope, why not waterfall? Why, why scrum? Because so that's, that's another yeah. option in toolkit, which is provided when things are predictable, when you know that scope is not going to change how to deliver things upfront, like building a, a, a doing a construction of a building, then yeah. you don't need to follow scrum. Absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the option, which is there in the discipline agile toolkit. Got it. Okay. Cool. All right. I will move this card to done and I'll share additional details offline. What is next card? I think this is the similar card, which we have discussed just now, discipline, agile, delivery and safe. So as I answered earlier, safe is prescriptive. It's a framework which says that in a big enterprise, if you want to deliver things, when five to 12 teams need to work together, these are the rules by which you need to work. Whereas discipline agile, is a toolkit which says that if it's a big work, follow safe. It's a small work when you need to do a lot of experiments, then you don't need to have, you know, scale agile framework as a way of delivering things. So I, I reckon we have already discussed this. So I'll move this card to done. Next one is, all right, who has written this card? It will be worthwhile to just explore more. Uh, I, I have written that. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, Sami, we can see Flo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I had written that. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, hi, hi. Yeah, can you see me now? No, yeah. we can see no, that. No. I had written this uh, uh, question, uh, this discussion point. So it's basically, uh, what next? If we do Agile, Basics, Scrum, if we do Safe, SAFE and then SAFE has a lot of suffixes, SAFE, safe Alpha, SAFE Beta, SAFE Gamma, like, uh, so what is the road ahead if we clear the SAFE exam? And we also uh, put it in practice in various roles, like as a product owner, as uh, something else, as something else. So we want to just few lines on that. Okay, we want to, Ben, Sam, do you want to share? You your insights, like how do you see yourself as growing as an Agile professional? In terms of the way forward, so um, I, I only that, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't follow the sort of safe gamma and so on, but I know we're on safe version five now, which has built up since, you know, one, two, three, four. And I see the progression being, you might start either with the scrum route, um, so you may be a scrum master, or you might start as a, as a product owner. Typically you become certified, you take on uh, scaled agile, so safe. And then after that point, you may feel qualified to start coaching organizations on how to make the transition to safe. And when you're at that level, you'll go for or a safe consultant is that the name of it safe program consultant that's another certification program that comes after safe so that to me is is the simple route um, in a nutshell anyone else okay. i didn't, I didn't oh. catch the question sorry sandy would you mind yeah uh, what what sam was saying is that if anyone want to start journey in agile world what what is the career path forward after doing, you know, agile certification, self certifications, where, where do you see yourself moving? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with Ben. I think there's a, a couple of pathways through and definitely, you know, uh, product owner, product managers, one pathway, um, you know, tech lead, um, that kind of pathway, or, um, I've got, I've personally gone business analyst, uh, scrum master, delivery lead, agile coach, that way, which is sort of in the middle. Um, there's, there's a lot of different pathways through. Yeah. Yeah. In, in fact, it all depends. Uh, I always start with why and what you want to achieve in life, right? So yeah. where, where is your passion? And I have seen a lot of people applying same concept in different, uh, you know, context. So you, you can become, after doing all these certifications and applying all those learnings, you can still be, become an effective agile delivery manager or agile program manager. And nowadays I have seen there is a lot of demand in the market where someone need to know all those agile practices. Uh, and sometimes agile coach as an external role is not perceived. It is supposed to be a skill. 
uh, embedded within Agile Delivery Manager or Program Manager. Other thing is that if you are more curious towards product management, product ownership, then that's that's another area where you can explore, as Sam and Ben were saying. Uh, natural progression, once you get good hold of different you know, Agile frameworks and practices, you try to address more systematic issues and challenges. So you move towards more organizational or business agility space and try to tackle more systematic things wherein you need to leverage different things from different toolkits, different practices. So you might be applying something from Kanban, something from Safe, something from Scrum, something as, as basic as what's there in Agile Manifesto. And uh, that's where your practices and your deep learning comes in picture, where you are talking with, let's say, CEOs, you're talking with scientists or business development manager, and that person doesn't know anything about Agile taxonomy, right? So how you are able to connect with that person and understand what makes sense it's something which keep you aside from the rest of the crowd and for that you need to have a lot of in-depth knowledge and uh, you know practice as well and uh, one thing we forgot to mention sandeep as well of course you've got the spotify model and some larger organizations will go down the route of having tribes set up so those naturally have a tribe lead um you also have the chapters which is almost like the functional disciplines of the old world so i'm myself i'm a global chapter lead so i have everyone who's in the agile chapter reporting into me and then you learn i suppose all the different agile skill sets and the specialisms ux ui coaches and so on so if you're really keen on the agile side of things there are long-term sort of management roles in those fields as well um, and it, it, like you say, it does depend where you take your career. Are you going down the consulting route? Are you going down the industry route? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there are heaps and heaps of things to explore. Just imagine Agile Manifesto was written 20 years back, right? And still there's so much appetite within industry. And uh, there are a lot of companies who are still going through Agile transformation. So uh, I think tremendous opportunity ahead based on how far you want to go. Yeah, Sandeep, we're out of time on that that point, so we're five minutes now. I've got to drop off, I'm afraid, but um, it's been nice discussing everything with you. And Samir, I've enjoyed my tour of Tokyo, so all the best, <laughs> everyone. And uh, we'll see you at the next one. Cheers. Bye. Great. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Bye. See you later. Bye -bye. Cheers. All right. So, Samir, are we good to move this card to done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes. Can all you right. see? Yeah, looks looks like Samir is on a marathon or kind kind of doing. Can you work. see something? Can you see my face or can you see the Tokyo Tower? I can see everything. You can see your face. Oh, you can see everything. <laughs> I don't know what, what I'm doing right now. That's okay. fine. <laughs> All right, so we have got two topics. Uh, we'll we'll first move on with this, and I'm conscious of time. I have got hard stop at five forty five uh, Australian time, which is in ten minutes. So next one is who has put up this card? Anyone want to talk about it? This is me, Sandeep. So uh, uh, why I have asked uh, or why I choose to vote, right? That is uh, in, in from our conversation, if you remember in terms of understanding the Agile Toolkit or, or the Disciplined Agile Toolkit, right? And I was, I, I was checking for a few other courses which may be uh, mm -hmm. beneficial to understand in terms of how value stream works, right? And there is another course from a PMI on value stream, which is, uh, I don't remember the course name, but, uh, but what, I underst what, I, what, what I need to understand when we are talking about value stream in the agile way, how is it? Because normal value stream I understand, but when we are talking about value stream in agile, what it is and how it is. Yeah, that's that's really uh, interesting question. But anyone want to give it a go? Value stream in general. No, that's fine. So see, uh, value stream doesn't matter whether you are referring safe scale agile framework or discipline agile or anything else. Value stream is a standard concept and there are a lot of books where you can explore more about it yeah. whole idea is that you need to identify who is your customer what value you are going to deliver and then who all need to be involved in order to deliver that value including all those activity steps plus material and people and information which needs to flow through it uh, when we are talking about discipline agile discipline agile has come up with discipline agile value stream consultant as a uh, you know role and they have got this course uh, when they they have taken you know different approach they have applied a lot of things from different uh, body of knowledge 
and come up with a customized approach saying that based on goal of your organization, how you can organize those teams towards a value stream. Whereas in SAFE, SAFE also has got similar thing, but SAFE has got, you know, concept called as operational value stream and development value stream. And it has got its own way of implementing value stream construct by saying that everyone need to be part of same release train, agile yeah. release train, follow same cadence of, you know, one quarter and then deliver things in a certain way. And it has got its own specific roles. So again, I haven't explored value stream consultant course, so I'm, uh, it will be, you know, naive on my behalf to talk more about it, but they have come up with this new course where expectation is that all those organizations who are going through transformational phase, they want to do org redesign. They want to, you know, uh, uh, understand who need to fit in where, uh, they have come up with this course to explain that, but safe, safe standpoint is that there's a, we don't want to touch the existing hierarchy. So that hierarchy is going to reside as it is. What we are going to do, we are going to create a virtual organization, which will be nothing but a release train. And that's how we are going to organize everyone around a value which needs to be delivered. Got it, Sandeep, thank you. Cool. Anyone else has got anything to add? We still have about one minute for this topic. Um, I can ask another question if, if, if we have time. Um, mm -hmm. So normally when we talk about a value stream, right, it is a lean approach, right? Uh, understand, understand the process flow where your process is giving uh, or where your process is not generating any value, remove the wastage, then continue the flow process, right? Now, but when we are uh, talking in an agile sense, like well, I, I think uh, you already told that you have not uh, explored but uh, I think uh, for, if we can talk about next time when we meet that wh how, what is, how it is translating value, how it is different than the lean value stream to agile value stream. Yeah, so probably we can have that as a topic for discussion during next session. That's, that's Thank really you, Sandeep. Cool, all right. Let's move on to the next topic, which is difference between lean coffee and open space. Who has put up this topic? I think Clement, Clement, is that you? Your voice is breaking. Yes, yes, Sandeep. Am I able to you? Yep. So the difference between uh, lean coffee and open space, does anyone want to give it a go before I share my two cents? No. All right. So lean coffee is as lean coffee is nothing but what we are doing now here. Right. So we haven't had set agenda. What we did, we came together, we decided, okay, what are, what are those things which matter most? What are those things which we want to discuss in this session? We put those topics and then we had quick vote to identify which topic we want to discuss first, uh, using democratic way. We have gone through everything. Uh, so that's the lean coffee format. In ideal world, expectation is that rather than having it virtually, you go over coffee as an entire team, and then you discuss, pick up everyone's brain and understand, you know, what's happening, where you can help each other rather than getting constrained by a particular visual board or by, uh, you know, Kanban or, you know, you know, scrum board. Open space is more like unconference wherein you will be, uh, so has anyone participated in open space or unconference? No. So in unconference, what happens is it's a, on a large scale, like a lean coffee, but you will have multiple rooms or multiple spaces. Uh, people will come together, will, will list down agenda and that agenda will be open for everyone. And after that, there is a something called as a rule of feet of two, which means that if you are interested, you will go and randomly join any particular forum and contribute. If you are not interested, you'll move on to the next room and next, uh, you know, explore that next topic. So something similar to lean coffee, but at a large scale, just imagine if we had 20 or 25 people, right? And if 25 people have put at least one card each, it was humanly impossible to go through all cards in a single session when everyone is together. What we could have done, we could have created breakout rooms 
and in a breakout room we could have discussed all those topics based on the interest and then people could have actually moved from one room to another room if they wanted to explore one particular topic based on their interest so that's that's how this open space or unconference work where and again you set agenda on your own as a group and then you have got multiple options whether you want to just stick with one group or explore a uh, different topic in with different group does that help flemen yes sir sandeep yeah thank you all right the last one is about servant leadership which hasn't got any vote uh, who has popped this card anyone looks like those who have created might have dropped off so i can quickly talk about it uh, servant leadership quite often you might have heard that in agile space when people keep on talking and saying that you know anyone who is playing agile leadership role need to uh, follow the servant leadership style uh, as you can see in this particular word there are two parts servant and leader a uh, whole idea is that rather than expecting everything to be done by the people on the ground uh, whenever you are working or leading any group you should always keep in mind that pur your purpose or your role is to serve them and as a, any agile leader whether it's a scrum master product owner or agile coach or agile consultant servant leadership is a key attribute uh, how you can build servant leadership there are different ways you can you can try practicing active listening you can explore how you can show more empathy uh, you can start working on your emotional intelligence part and all those things help you to become a uh, you know better a leader when you go ahead and try to support team try to help team uh, encourage team to explore more uh, rather than expecting them to you know fit in a one particular box and giving them orders so that's the whole idea of servant leadership as an as an uh, attribute for any agile leader All right, we have got two minutes. Uh, has is there anything else from anyone to discuss? No. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. I reckon you must have find it, uh, found it interesting and insightful. So what I will do, I'll upload recording of this video on Agility Channels, uh, Agility Academy's YouTube channel, so you can have a look at it and uh, i will i will update you on upcoming uh, agile leadership orientation session wherein i will talk about you know more agile leadership specific things thank you everyone thanks a lot and i have great rest of the, your day thank you cheers thank you sandeep thank you thank you sandeep thank you everyone